All right, so get this. There's this asteroid out there yep. called 2024 YR4, and it's big, like a football mm -hmm. field, big enough to cause some serious problems. Wow. The crazy thing is scientists are saying there's a chance it could actually hit us. Hit Earth? Yeah, in 2032. Oh, no. They only just found it recently, so they're still trying to figure out its exact path. I see. Still early days, then. Yeah, exactly. Makes sense. But we've got some articles and reports here that break down the details, uh -huh. the risks, and what we can do about it, if anything. Well, it's kind of like, mm. imagine playing darts, but instead of a board, you've got the entire Earth. Okay. So that 1.6% chance of impact means there's just this tiny sliver of that target where it might hit. So not a guaranteed bullseye, but enough to make you nervous, right? right. Uh, what makes this one, 2024 YR4, stand out from all the other space rocks? Well, its size for one, that's a big deal. Yeah. Think about it, an asteroid the size of a football field hitting Earth. That's enough to wipe out an entire city. Oh yeah, it's what scientists call a city killer. A city killer, huh? Yeah, and the fact it was just discovered means we're still learning about its path which makes it even more interesting. So it's like this new kid on the block everyone's trying to figure out. Pretty much. And we're talking about potential impact in 2032, mm -hmm. which isn't that far off. No, it's not. What happens if this thing actually does hit? Well, to get an idea, you have to look back at the Tunguska event in 1908. Okay. A much smaller asteroid exploded over Siberia mm -hmm. and flattened 80 million trees. 80 million trees. Over 770 square miles. That's like wiping out every tree in a small country. Yeah, it was a huge event. Wow. And the crazy part is that scientists estimate the impact was equivalent to about 8 megatons of TNT. Seriously? Over 500 times the power of the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Okay, that puts things into perspective. Yeah. But 2024 YR4 is even bigger than the one that caused Tunguska, right? I mean, what kind of damage are we talking about here? Would it be like something out of a disaster movie? Well, the term city killer does sound pretty dramatic. Yeah, it does. And while a direct hit on a populated area would obviously be devastating. Sure. The effects of an impact really depend on a lot of things. Okay. The asteroid's makeup, the angle it hits at, uh -huh. and of course, exactly where it lands. Right, because an ocean impact would be different from a direct hit on a city. Absolutely. But still, the potential impact zones, according to the reports, include the Pacific Ocean, South America, yeah. the Atlantic, Africa, the Arabian Sea, and South Asia. It's a wide range. I mean, that's a pretty big chunk of the planet. It is. And if the impact happens in the ocean near a coast, there's the added threat of tsunamis, right. which could be devastating to coastal communities. Exactly. So this is serious stuff. It is. Should we be worried? I mean, is this a real threat or is it all just media hype? I mean, it's understandable to be concerned, mm -hmm. but the actual probability of impact is currently low. Okay. Plus, scientists are constantly monitoring the skies for potential threats like this one. Right. And the more they observe 2024 YR4, the more accurately they can predict its path. Okay, so more information less panic. Exactly. But what if, despite all the monitoring and calculations, yeah. this thing really is on a collision course with Earth? Mm -hmm. I mean, what can we actually do to stop an asteroid? Well, do we have some kind of planetary defense plan? That's a great question, and the answer is yes. Really? We do have some options. Okay. It's not quite like the movies, but we're not totally defenseless against these kinds of threats. Okay, you've got my attention. Good. What's in our arsenal when it comes to asteroid defense? Well, Can we really uh, deflect something that big? Remember NASA's DART mission? Oh, yeah. They successfully crashed a spacecraft into an asteroid. Uh-huh. And actually changed its course. Oh, yeah, I remember reading about that. It's like playing a cosmic game of billiards. So we can actually nudge these things off course. Yeah. That's incredible. Are there any other options being explored? There are, though they're still in the experimental phase. Okay. One idea involves using lasers. Lasers? To vaporize part of an asteroid's surface, creating a thrust that would push it away from Earth. Hmm. Another concept is a gravity tractor. Oh. A gravity tractor. Okay. Essentially a large spacecraft that would use its gravitational pull to gently tug the asteroid away over time. 
lasers, gravity tractors. Phony. It sounds like we're living in a science fiction novel. I know, right? But are these methods actually feasible? That's the challenge, isn't it? Yeah. These technologies are incredibly complex and would require a massive global effort to develop and deploy. Mm. Plus, there's the question of international cooperation. Oh, right. Who needs to decide which method to use? Yeah. And what happens if one country's solution accidentally puts another at risk? It's like a whole new level of international diplomacy, right? It is. But let's go back to 2024 YR4 for a second. Okay. We've got this asteroid with a small chance of hitting Earth in eight years. Right. What are scientists doing right now? to monitor and prepare for it? Well, the first step is to gather as much data as possible. Okay. They're using powerful telescopes and radar systems to track the asteroid's movement, uh -huh. measure its size and shape, and analyze its composition. So it's all about gathering intel. Right. Kind of like a cosmic detective story. Exactly. But what happens if, after all the observations, yeah. it looks like 2024 YR4 really is heading our way? Mm. What would those next eight years look like in terms of preparing for a potential impact? That's when things would get really interesting. How so? It would trigger a global response yeah. with scientists, engineers, and policymakers from around the world coming together to develop a plan. Wow. It would likely involve continued monitoring, uh -huh. further refining the asteroid's trajectory, and most importantly, deciding on a course of action. So it wouldn't just be about deflecting the asteroid, but also about preparing for the potential consequences, right? Right. Like figuring out evacuation plans, yeah. setting up emergency response systems, and educating the public about the risks. Exactly. It would be a massive undertaking requiring unprecedented levels of global cooperation and coordination. Yeah. Think about it. We'd be preparing for an event that has never happened in recorded history, at least not on this scale. That's a pretty sobering thought. It is. But it also makes you realize how important it is to invest in planetary defense. Absolutely. Not just for us, but for future generations. It's about the future of our planet. I think you're right. Yeah. Sometimes it takes a potential threat to really make us appreciate what we have and what we need to do to protect it. I agree. It's funny, you know, before we started this deep dive, yeah. I never really thought much about asteroids. Hmm? They were just these distant rocks in space. Out there somewhere, right? Yeah, exactly. But now, after learning all this, <laughs> yeah. I can't help but look up at the night sky. I know what you mean. And wonder what else is it's out like, there. It's like you suddenly become aware of this whole invisible world, yeah. this cosmic dance of objects just hurtling through space. And some of them, like 2024 YR4, right. have the potential to really shake things up. They do. It makes you realize that Earth is just this little blue marble in a vast and unpredictable universe. Yeah, it really does. But it's also inspiring to think that we have the ability to track these objects, uh -huh. study them, yeah. and even potentially defend ourselves against them. Exactly. It's like we're not just passive passengers on this planet anymore. Right. We're becoming active participants in our cosmic destiny. I like that. Active participants in our cosmic destiny. It's pretty cool, right? <laughs> but let's talk about those active steps for a minute. Okay. What are some of the things scientists are working on right now in terms of planetary defense? Well, one of the key areas of focus is early detection. Early detect, you see, the sooner we can spot a potentially hazardous asteroid, the more time we have to react. Yeah, it makes sense. So scientists are developing new telescopes, radar systems, and computer algorithms to help us identify these threats earlier mm. and with greater accuracy. So it's all about having better eyes on the sky, like having a really good neighborhood watch program, but for space. Exactly. What about those deflection technologies we were talking about? Are there any new breakthroughs on the horizon? There are some really exciting developments. Like what? For example, researchers are exploring the use of ion beams to very gently nudge asteroids off course. Ion beams. Over a long period of time. That sounds like something out of Star Wars. I know, it's pretty cool. How does that even work? It's actually a very precise and controlled method. Okay. Imagine a beam of charged particles, kind of like a super focused laser, mm -hmm. uh -huh. gently pushing against the asteroid changing its trajectory ever so slightly. It wouldn't be a sudden impact like DART, but a gradual, almost imperceptible shift over years. So instead of a dramatic collision, it's more like a gentle nudge in the right direction. Exactly. That's pretty amazing. It is. What else is out there? Well, there's also a lot of interest in using solar sails. Oh, yeah. Remember we talked about how these large reflective sheets can harness the power of sunlight to propel a spacecraft? Uh-huh. Well, scientists are exploring the idea of attaching these sails to asteroids. Okay. Using the gentle but constant force of sunlight, 
to gradually alter their path. So we'd essentially be using the sun's energy to steer these space rocks away from Earth. Yep, that's the idea. That's pretty ingenious. It is. It seems like we're really starting to think outside the box when it comes to planetary defense. Absolutely. And that's what makes this field so exciting. All right. Pushing the boundaries of science and technology, forcing us to come up with creative solutions to problems we've never faced before. We're entering a whole new era of space exploration, where we're not just observing the cosmos. Right but actively shaping it. But with this power comes responsibility, right? Absolutely. We have to make sure we're using these technologies wisely and ethically. We need to carefully consider the potential consequences of our actions mm. and make sure that any interventions we make are truly in the best interests of humanity and our planet. Well, this has been an incredible deep dive. It has. I feel like I've learned so much, not just about asteroids, yeah. but about our place in the universe mm. and our responsibility to protect our planet. It's a big responsibility. It is. I'm glad to hear that. It's important to remember that we're all in this together. Yeah. Planetary defense is a global issue that requires global cooperation and a shared sense of purpose. I think you've given us a lot to think about. I hope so. So to wrap things up, what's the one message you'd like to leave our listener with? Hmm. Stay curious. Okay. Keep exploring and never underestimate the power of human ingenuity to overcome even the most daunting challenges. I love that. So to our listener out there, yeah. keep looking up, keep asking questions. Mm -hmm. And remember, we're all part of this grand cosmic adventure. And who knows, maybe one day you'll be the one to discover the next big breakthrough in planetary defense. You never know. <laughs>